Okay, okay. Yes, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has been announced, and one of the biggest questions is who can we fight as, right? Yeah, I get it. Well, Sakurai has gone on record saying that because he's bringing back all of the previously playable fighters from every game prior, we shouldn't hope for too many new fighters. But then he proceeds to show us Ridley. So obviously we can expect some new characters, but the question is, how many and who? In this video, I'm not going to talk about Echo Fighters. I'm only going to talk about fresh newcomers for Smash Ultimate. And so I'm thinking that we can expect just around three more unique characters for the next game. And I have my theories about who they'll be. I'm Midnight, and these are my predictions for the new characters coming to Smash Bros. Ultimate. This is totally not confirmed and just my opinion, so chill and keep that in mind. Alright, let's do it. Number 1, Springman. Springman is the most probable newcomer when you think about it. ARMS is a brand new Nintendo IP that was a staple for the Nintendo Switch and did a lot for the console in its early life. Of course, credit also goes to games like The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and Super Mario Odyssey. But ARMS made its mark as well. It sold almost 2 million copies worldwide. It takes advantage of the Switch's key features like motion controls, separation of Joy-Cons, and portability, and the game has a fairly large cast of unique characters. Not to mention that it's a fighting game with fists with different properties, so visualizing this character's move pool in Smash is pretty easy. Springman is the character of choice, however, seeing that he's basically the ARMS mascot, if you don't count the icon Mr. Yabuki throwing those hands from time to time. Smash in essence, though, is a game where Nintendo's beloved characters fight it out, and I honestly can't see how ARMS and Springman don't qualify by now. Sure, the hype for ARMS has died down now, but at its peak, it was a really popular game. And if Sakurai is willing to go against his judgment to put Ridley in the game, then Springman is definitely possible. So yeah, I think Springman is likely to be in the game. But I also think Ribbon Girl will be an alternate costume. I mean, female representation through alternate costumes is something that Sakurai has been doing already with Robin and Corrin. So Ribbon Girl could follow the same trend. And yes, I know that for Robin and Corrin's games, there were customizable avatars that could be male or female. So Sakurai lets you choose which one you want to be in Smash. But I still think that it makes sense to include Ribbon Girl, considering that she's the most notable female character in ARMS, and each character in the game only has four color choices. This means that if Springman and Ribbon Girl combine to make one character, it would make a total of eight alternate costumes, which is exactly what's needed for a Smash character. I don't think, however, that any of the other ARMS characters will be included in Smash since characters like Mechanica and Master Mummy have completely different sizes, shapes, and abilities that wouldn't translate right as alternate costumes. But at the minimum, Springman could be the newest Smash fighter. Number 2, Decidueye or a Generation 8 Pokemon. A lot of people want to see Decidueye in Smash. And though I don't think that alone is a good reason for him to be in the game, people's hype is not misplaced. Ever since Rowlet, Decidueye's first form, was announced as a starter for Pokemon Sun and Moon, Decidueye has only gotten more popular. I mean, Ultra Sun and Moon sold well, and the Generation 7 Pokemon anime is still going strong, so Decidueye, being one of the more popular starters from the Sun and Moon games, has the public eye the most. He was also added to the Director's Cut version of Pokémon Tournament on the Switch, so it's safe to say that Nintendo likes this starter a lot too. So does this confirm Decidueye for Smash? Not quite. Pokémon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee got announced, so hype is shifting away from Generation 7. And Generation 8 of Pokémon drops in 2019. This could change a lot of theories if more information comes out before Smash's December release date. If the set of starters, or even one really impressionable Pokemon is released from Generation 8, we could be looking at a potential new fighter. I mean, Roy was a playable character in Smash Bros. Melee before the American audience even really knew what franchise he came from, so something similar could happen here. I don't know if a Generation 8 Pokemon is really likely though, considering that Game Freak and the Pokemon Company could be releasing the game in late 2019. This means that they possibly won't have anything about the games ready for the public by the time Smash Ultimate drops. Until we know for sure, Decidueye might just be our best bet for Smash Ultimate. 
So before we get to the last potential candidate, let's slow down and talk about some honorable mentions for characters that I really think have a shot at being in Smash Ultimate if Sakurai makes more than three original newcomers. But before that, if you're liking the video so far, show some support by hitting the like button and subscribe if you want to keep up with the next videos I release. Okay, so now on to the honorable mentions. It came to nobody's surprise that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was a huge success. I mean, the first game was so good that Shulk was brought to Smash. And Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is probably one of the most immersive, most intricate, hell, one of the most fun games on the Nintendo Switch to date. Rex and Pyra are an iconic duo for sure, and a follow-up game, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torn of the Golden Country, is releasing in the next few months as well. So the hype is there. But I just think that some of these other Nintendo series are going to get more attention for the long-term benefits. But Rex and Pyra are characters that I personally want to see the most in Smash Ultimate. Just like Ridley, King K. Rule is a fan-favorite villain that's been requested for Smash for a long time. And just like Ridley, Sakurai could be bringing him into the fight as we speak. The likelihood of his inclusion could be higher than we ever thought, but Sakurai already fulfilled his fanservice quota with Ridley. So King K. Rule is still only a possibility, but his odds seem better than ever before. Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy was recently released for the Nintendo Switch. That means that the Crash Bandicoot hype is pretty high. This is his first Nintendo console appearance since Mind Over Mutant on the Wii. And that must mean something, right? Now, I'm not saying that he's super likely or unlikely, because the third party characters are definitely hard to predict. But Crash is a gaming icon and deserves to have his games on the newest Nintendo console. The question is, is it worth it for Sakurai to pull his strings and pull the resources necessary to get Crash in the game? Now, all these honorable mentions definitely have their fair shot at getting into the game, but I think that the first two candidates and this last one might have a higher chance of making the Smash 5 roster. Number 3, Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Finally, a Fire Emblem main series game is announced for the Switch. I have been itching to get my hands on one since the possibility even once came up. It looks new, it looks stunning. It looks like a lot of effort is going into this game. And unlike the other candidates, the avatar from this game, as of now known as Byleth, is going to be in a game releasing in the future. Which means that just like Fire Emblem Fates, Sakurai might just include a Three Houses character to build up general hype for the game. And I know, I know exactly what you're going to say. The last thing we need in Smash is another blue-haired swordsman. You got Mar and I. Nina, Robin has blue hair sometimes, and even this guy. But honestly, at this point, it doesn't matter. Sakurai is already developing 66 characters that, for the most part, all look and play so differently from each other that I don't really see the problem. Furthermore, we really know nothing about Byleth right now. We definitely can't say that he's just a swordsman. I mean, in the Three Houses trailer, he has the ability to train Edelgard in sword skills as well as axe skills, so we don't know what weapons Byleth can really use. One mechanic from the Fire Emblem series that hasn't been seen in Smash is the ability to switch between weapons before attacking enemies. Byleth could be the perfect character to implement this feature on. Maybe his side smash could be an axe attack and his up smash could be a swipe with his sword or something. We just don't know. But all things considered, I think that Byleth's inclusion in Smash could be a smart decision on Nintendo's part since Fire Emblem was originally a Japanese exclusive until 2003, so Fire Emblem could still need to build its popularity in outside countries to get to the same ranks as Mario and The Legend of Zelda. But again, we can't know for sure until Sakurai puts Byleth in our faces and says here you go, you filthy animals. So that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope I brought some interesting points to light. At the end of the day though, I'm just a guy. I have no idea if any of these characters will actually make the cut, but I'm hoping that we get to see for ourselves through some kind of update sometime soon. If you have any ideas about who you think will be in Smash Ultimate, let me know by leaving a comment down below. I'd love to see what you come up with. And if you liked the video, drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more of me. But until next time. 
Peace.